Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we're in one of my favorite places here. This is Rancho's Palos Verdes. Uh, the Bulls folks, they've got like some property around here and their company is actually down near LA. So we've been spending the day out on the E-Stream Evo line. This is the AM3 27.5 plus, right? And that's really talking about the tires here. It's the more affordable of the two. We looked at the AM4 earlier today and that was, I think it was like $62.99. And this one here, it's $500 less, so $57.99. You're still paying a lot, but you know, for 500 bucks, what's different, right? That's everyone's question. Um, first of all, it doesn't have a Velo grips. It's just, oh, these are Velo. It doesn't have Ergon grips. This is something I noticed when we were looking at the specs earlier. And you know, I, I like Ergon. You kind of got the name brand and everything. These feel good, right? And if you have gloves on, they're very similar. They're kind of like that flat grip style. Uh, they work well enough. They actually, both of these bikes have the same suspension setup. Love that it's blacked out and you've got this nice coating here, both Fox. And so it's going to give you a uh, reduced stick shin, a little bit fatter. These are 36 millimeter stanchions, and that's a bit of extra strength for the heavier front wheel. You can see the tire here. This is Knobby Nicks uh, on both front and rear with that Attics speed grip. Whereas over here we had Magic Mary up front. So it was a different tread pattern, maybe for more grip, uh, a little bit softer rubber i'm guessing than the speed grip that we see here so a little bit of a difference and maybe that you know it's it's a minor thing but uh, i haven't really been riding and, and maybe i'm not like expert enough to tell you like how much of a difference that makes but it is different different that this one just has the same tires same size though 27.5 by 2.8 so they are plus size it's going to give you some float excellent grip if you're in softer terrain maybe it's a little bit wet out which it is today so that's coming in handy a little bit more drag a little bit more weight on a setup like this where you've got plus size front and rear and that's okay, especially with an e-bike like this, because you've got that motor support, which is really nice here. I'm going to get into the, the Broza S-Mag later. Excellent motor system, in my opinion. I really enjoy riding it, but I haven't owned one of these long term, right? And so this is where it's like a community. I really appreciate your feedback. If you have one of the older Broza T or just S, now we have the S-Mag, right? So it's 15% lighter, really efficient, compact motor. I like the, the ride feel that it produces. It's just very responsive and fluid. Coming back to the wheels and just the, the overbuilt design of the wheel interface here. So we've got a 15 millimeter through axle and I like that Fox has this little like dial so you can really optimize where that quick release lever is pointing. And in this case, it's perfect. It's kind of back. It's not gonna get snagged on some things. It's not pointing down. It's up and towards the, the fork, the lower there. Really appreciate that. 110 millimeter hub spacing up front. So that's boost, a little bit wider. And that gives you a sturdier bracing angle with the spokes. Since these are 27.5 inch wheels, they're not 26. On the other hand, they're not 29. So it's a good compromise, especially when you've got like a taller, fatter tire. So you got the comfort, the traction we talked about in the rear, 148 millimeter hub spacing versus 135 so it's a little bit wider same thing you're getting that that spoke bracing support and 14 gauge spokes on the front versus 13 in the rear so a little bit thicker nicer to have those those heavy duty spokes in the back where you might have a little bit more of your weight uh, especially if you're climbing or like coming off of a jump or a hard landing this is an am like all mountain bike with 150 millimeters travel on both of those suspension elements Really good, uh, good good for descending, maybe even like light downhill, which we do have some of that terrain where we're at right now. Really comes in handy for that sort of riding. But also just if you're someone like me, you have sensitive back and knees and, and neck and stuff, I love full suspension. Like Bulls does have a hard tail E-Stream model, which is talking about the Broza drivetrain or drive system. But I find that I stand up to sort of reduce the shock of bumps and then that shock goes into my knees. Whereas my whole body is suspended with rear suspension. So even though I'm not like a super hardcore mountain biker, I really, I'm willing to pay a little bit more for full suspension. So this is right up my alley personally. Definitely appreciate that. They've got uh, a kind shock. This is SI, 125 millimeters of, uh, it, it, this is a dropper seat post, right? So in case you're unfamiliar with these, this little lever right here, 
it, it uh, helps to elevate that. So while you're riding real time, you can raise the saddle and get full leg extension for pedaling. Maybe you're climbing or doing cross country sections. And then when you're dropping, you can drop that seat. And like I was saying before, you can kind of stand up and use your legs to help suspend and maneuver on the bike. Really good setup, something that every like real kind of a hardcore electric bike or non-electric bike should have. And then the suspension, you can really dial that in. So we have compression adjust right here. So firm, so almost like a lockout or open, you're getting it really soft. We have air pressure settings over there on the left top of the crown. And then we have rebound at the bottom. Okay, same thing here. That red is rebound. And then we've got the three different settings, kind of the climb trail descend or, you know, soft or firm medium and then soft and i'm always riding soft again this is air so you can you can sag that and just really really nice setup i like how it all matches the color scheme on this bike is is pretty fun it's a little bit understated which is nice got that like satin or matte black with a little bit of gloss black and some orange accents and a little bit of gray too i like that bulls you know this is i think 7005 aluminum alloy and they've got this little extender piece here which is like a stanchion guard so if rock and muck and stuff is being kicked up it's not going to hit and nick your stanchion even though it is anodized black just like the front a little bit a uh, little bit tougher than if it weren't and just neat looking right like some of this is aesthetics got to be honest here coming down to the motor we've got this big alloy skid plate that's going to protect it really well and it kind of blends in with the rest of the frame there's no battery cover but the battery is aluminum alloy encased Okay, so I was kind of wondering about this and I was talking to the folks at Bulls, there's Barney over there. Um, I was asking him like, so what's the deal? You know, if water or dirt and dust gets in there, what, what does that mean? And he was telling me, well, it's IP56 ingress protected rating. So it's like IP56 ingress protection. And that's pretty good. So from dust, from water. And then he told me that they've got a pretty good warranty here in terms of like the drive train, the drive system, it's like two year comprehensive, but four years on the battery? Four years on the battery, two years on all electrical components. So that's gonna cover wires, displays, uh, driving as well. Wow, that's phenomenal. You know, and that's one of the areas of vulnerability that I have heard from just shops and, you know, individuals who have said, yeah, I got this electric bike, but I dropped the battery, you know, and that, that could kind of mess it up. And this is a pretty high capacity battery. This is 37 volt. 20 amp hours, okay? Like most of the time I'm looking at like 36 volt, 13.4 amperes. That's the Bosch uh, power tube, right? And it's kind of a similar configuration. I think that one's six point, I don't know, seven pounds or something like this. This one at 740 watt hours, you're getting a lot more capacity. And of course it does weigh a little bit more. It's like eight and a half pounds on that. But the motor here, this motor only weighs like 6.39 pounds versus a Bosch performance line, which is like the comparable um, high performance from Bosch versus from Broza, that motor weighs 8.8 .8 pounds, right? Versus 6.39. So the total weight of this full suspension plus size boost electric bike is 55.4 pounds with that high capacity battery. To me, that's awesome. And I love the way it looks. Uh, but one thing I don't have, th this is a little bit of like a pre-production. It's, it's not quite set up to where we can unlock it. They do give you ABIS keys with that keyed like code card thing. So you can match your keys and get like a folding lock or something and take that with you. Right now, instead of, um, you know, having like a folding lock or something with you, which is more of a city application. They've got this monkey link bottle, which is magnetic. So you just kind of twist it like that. It comes right off. This is 46 bucks, which is kind of a lot for a bottle, but being able to put it on and take it off that quickly and easily is really nice. And you can see there are those screws right there. So you could always just take that mount off and put your own, maybe like side mounting cage or a folding lock. And so I just, I like that they're using name brand stuff like Abus for that. Uh, because you do have that option of getting key to like and then they've got a monkey link seat post clamp and Headset up here, right? So it's got that interface. We actually have it turned on and everything is all hooked up right here over on the AM4 I love that it points where you steer. I found out that this is adjustable You can take it off and actually aim the light and then put it back on I always thought it was just fixed permanently before and then that rear light it's only one LED. This light pack right here is $170, which to me is a little bit of money, but being able to pull off of that main battery pack, especially at such high capacity, could be worth it. Unless you have to drop your, your seat all the way down and then the seat might collide with the top of this light. 
but you'll notice that they put it raised like this, probably so it just barely peeks over the rear tire because they are such big tires. Lots to think about. You know, when they're making these systems and trying to make it compatible with like every bike, they do their best, right? And just like I'm doing my best here trying to give you guys a tour, a virtual tour, and take everything into consideration. So coming back to just the frame, comes in three frame sizes. We're looking at like the 49 centimeter here. Again, the sticker's sort of wrong, but uh, it does come in 44 centimeter, 49 and 54. The handlebars got like a slight bend, a little bit of a rise. We've got some spacers here so you can dial it in and get a little more or less aggressive. Sully Royal M1 Bulls branded saddle. So this is a bigger company. It's actually like a kind of a dealer co-op thing going on in Europe and they've been expanding in North America. Got a whole bunch of dealers you can go to to get support, to take test rides. For me personally, the saddle is, it's kind of firm. You know, I would definitely be wearing like bike shorts or something, or maybe consider an alternative saddle. I'm kind of mixed on that one, but it looks nice, right? And it is, it is a nice saddle. Celery Royale makes good stuff. Same thing with the grips, even though these are Velo versus Ergon, they're locking. And then we come over to the Magura MT4, MT5 hydraulic disc brakes with adjustable reach levers. 203 millimeter rotor up front extra large, which you want because as you're stopping, a lot of your weight shifts forwards and that can get hot. So this cools it off. It also gives you a mechanical advantage over a larger diameter wheel. In the rear, we have 180 millimeter disc brake and you'll notice that's a dual caliper versus quad piston. <laughs> pistons there we go so quad piston up front dual piston in the rear so maybe a little bit lighter saving a little bit of money here both of them are quad piston on the mt4 that's one of the other upgrades so you know very good stopping power and then we've got these little uh holes right here so you could potentially do a kickstand at the rear if you wanted to like maybe you're someone like me you're gonna ride this for commuting or just for fun light trail during the week and you want to be able to like stand it up in your garage without bumping into your car or something you can do that because they've got those kickstand provisions. I love that. That's not something you can add easily on your own aftermarket. So whether it's the bottle cage bosses or the kickstand provisions and then the monkey link, there are a lot of little extras here. And you know, again, $57.99, it's like, that's not bad. There are a lot of these high-end electric mountain bikes where a battery is the trade-off or maybe you don't have all those accessory updates. I feel like Bulls does a really good job of bringing it all together and giving you multiple frame sizes and the warranty and stuff. So yeah, I've been pretty impressed with this thing. Um, I think the, the drivetrain, you know, is another area where they've done a pretty good job, but you're trading off a little bit Shimano Dior and it's got that Shadow Plus clutch right here. I just want to get a close up of that. So if I put it in this up position, it tightens it so that the chain isn't going to like uh, bounce as much, which could be useful if you're on a bumpy trail or you're riding faster. And then you can put it down when you're doing wheel maintenance or maybe it's just neighborhood riding and, and you don't want to have like quite as harsh of shifting happening and i'm going to show you some close-ups of that during the ride test later and also show you a battery off of the bike but while we're here we're talking about the battery this is the charger 4.7 amp so it's a little bit faster which is really nice when you've got such a high capacity battery 1.9 pounds a little bit large but at least this this wall plug it comes out so you can make it as compact as possible and it's got that charging interface that's energy bus rosenberger magnetic we brought that along just to show you guys and give you some idea of what you might want to put in your backpack if you're say riding way way down to town having like a coffee or meeting a friend for lunch or something you could charge the bike fill it up and then come all the way back the first half of the battery fills pretty quickly. It's when you get towards the second half, it slows down a little bit because it's balancing the cells. So that's a just a quick pro tip for you guys. You know, we did the, the AM4 earlier and I feel like I learned a lot with the lights and, and then just looking at this one, um, it's, a, it's a lot to spend, but when you think about like the comfort that it offers, the performance, the reliability from you guys, I, I'm stoked on it for sure. I wanted to be honest about like the trade-offs. There are little trade-offs. But you know, they're not they're not really that noticeable once you get on it and you're and you're riding, you're having fun. So maybe we should do that, right? Yeah, let's should we do hop it. on let's that thing? Will you grab the charger and I'll I'll just charge off on this trail for a second. There's our improvised kickstand. We'll leave that for next time. But I'll be covering more of the Bulls bikes soon. Oh, okay. So I gotta go through the display system, don't I? Press the power button here, comes right to life because we were riding it earlier. But if it doesn't, it might be because the battery has gone to sleep and there is this little like button down here and a little power indicator. So that's nice. You can tap that 
and wake the battery up if it's been in sleep mode. And then there's the little cover. It's got a leash now, so that's nice. It's not gonna get lost as easily. It's not like a super robust leash, but just try not to lose that cover. Um, there's the charging interface, it's magnetic. Even though it is close to that crank arm and could get bumped, at least it'll just pop out, it won't break or crack. So coming up to the display, if you tap the power button again, it goes to sleep. We've got a light button, which would activate the lights if they were on this bike. And it also activates backlighting for the display. This is transflective, so it's supposed to be pretty visible even in bright light, which that's kind of the situation right now. We've got five ticks on the battery infographic and speed in the middle. The up and down buttons are just the display. So you just press the display and it goes up to one block, two block, three block, or four blocks. There we go, that's the highest level. And they've got a range estimator. So there's a set button down here. If we press it, it goes from trip distance to range, 18 miles is what they're estimating for four blocks of power. And then total distance, 5.8. If you wanna clear the trip distance, you hold down for a while. If you wanna do walk mode, you hold up for a while and it gets you going, which could be really nice if you're on a steep section and you just, you don't wanna to try to attempt climbing it. And then if you hold set for a while, you can change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. So that's kind of the display overview. You'll notice how reachable it is with my thumbs. If you're way up here, it, it can be a little bit small, but it leaves the handlebars looking a bit more like natural. It doesn't look like a big electric bike with a huge display. And that might be a little less delicate over here, but it doesn't have a USB charging port or anything fancy like that. It's, it's just kind of minimalist is, is I think what they were going for here. So that's that. I'm in assist level... Mm, two, I think that, that makes sense because this is more of a descent. Hop on here and pedal. Just super, super, super quiet. That's one of the, the big takeaways for me um, with the Broza drive system. Quiet and smooth with like this Gates carbon belt drive interface inside of there. This trail is a little bit overgrown and I don't want to risk like falling off the bike or something like that. And you're just going to hear the leaves and stuff whacking the frame. So I'm going to turn it around and do a little bit of climbing with Barney here. Whoa, boy. Okay. Now I'm going to take it up to four blocks and hop back on. Very comfortable. And I'm trying to, there we go. No hands, off-road, feeling pretty good because of the width of those tires, being safe around this blind corner. Get a shot of Barney. Oh yeah, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> this is all with one hand, right? And that comes back to the power of those hydraulic disc brakes, especially the front one like that, it's working pretty well. I might trade off with him and just get some third person shots. Okay guys, from here you can see that 36 tooth chain ring up front. Love that it's got narrow wide tooth pattern because it's gonna lock in with that chain. You're not gonna have as many drops or any chain slip going on. E13 plastic guide, very lightweight, compact, stays out of the way. 165 millimeter Miranda crank arms versus like 170 on a lot of city bikes and stuff. So that might raise your pedals a little bit so you won't get strikes considering the 150 millimeter suspension travel. It's probably a nice thing to have. And the motor's just really tucked up in there. That is the Bros S Mag, so sport magnesium, lightweight, efficient, compact. This thing puts out up to 90 Newton meters of torque, 250 watts nominal. And then I believe it's 400, what? 410. 410 percent uh peak power output so that's that's awesome with the new blocks display there are four levels and you get this flex mode at the very top in the fourth block so it's a little bit kind of like emtb mode where there's more torque reliance and a little bit more responsive it's very cool broza has branded that as like progressive pedal assist is that right barney yeah. Yeah, so it's it's just neat. There's a lot going on with this motor. I'm gonna to try to demonstrate that in the ride test. But then back here, we've got the Shimano Dior XT with the Shadow Plus Plus clutch. <laughs> so you can tighten up that uh, derailleur and you're not gonna get as much chain bounce. We do have that nice plastic slap guard, 11 to 46 tooth cassette. So 11 speeds on this thing, that's, that's pretty awesome. And then that really extra large sprocket just makes it easier to climb. So enough said, I'm gonna hop on this thing. We're on concrete right here because I just want you to be able to hear the motor and see how quickly it responds. Uh, really nice setup.
awesome. <laughs> I'm always bumping the camera out of place. Uh, I, I'm just loving the, the trigger shifters on this bike. You've got the forward and back on the high and then multi-shift on the low. Shimano does a really good job um, with that. And, and I just feel like this, for me, this is one of the drivetrains that feels natural and familiar. There is no shift detection built in. That's something you might get with some of the Bosch drive systems. But because this is so smooth, because there's like the Gates carbon belt drive built into the Brosa motors, it does take off some of the vibration. It feels very natural. That new flex mode, you know, they're trying to get that like torque response even higher, but I've always felt like Brosa Motors did a great job anyway. So it's just, it's even better, I guess. You know, it's kind of neat to see. I'm gonna hop on one more time. And this time I'm gonna start in the lowest level of assist, one block, so it'll be a little quieter. purposely pedaling fast there because uh, this system does put out up to 120 rpm support so you're not going to out pedal the system and I, i'm commenting on this because sometimes you're like descending and you're in a high gear and then you switch way down to a low gear in preparation to climb a hill and in so doing your pedal cadence really goes up and if the motor can't keep up with you you lose power and then you just lose speed and it's kind of a bummer so i'm really liking this motor i feel like the whole system's just really well balanced and very performant. So we're just cruising along at the AM3, testing out that suspension a little bit. Beautiful. These bikes are both a whole lot of fun. It's a good day of riding. <laughs> Perfect weather too, it's not super hot. Of course with the e-bike, you don't have to worry about that quite as much. So we're just finishing with the AM3, got back and we've got a couple props here that are worth sharing. This is the motor casing off of the bike for the Broza S Mag, just so small and you can see it's Isis spline there. So compared to like square tapered, we've got all those ridges and it's just a more robust, uh, tighter interface. Something that's a little bit nicer from the mountain biking world right there. Definitely appreciate that. Just amazing how small they can make these considering it puts out 90 Newton meters of torque. And then here is the battery pack off of the bike. So it is an aluminum alloy casing with plastic endpoints. They have a single Rosenberger energy bus interface at the base here. So it's the same interface. You don't need like a dongle or something to charge this off the bike little sticker there talking about 37 volts, 20 amp hours for 740 watt hours and a little handle on the top, right? So you can kind of flip that up and carry it around a bit more carefully. I definitely appreciate that they've got a metal interface here for locking it onto the bike so people can't just break the plastic and try to mess the battery up or, you know, maybe not just people, but just the durability of how this interfaces with the bike, a little bit stronger materials. And there's the charging infographics. It'll show you how full it is. You don't even have to put this on the bike to get an idea. And that's nice if you're storing this long-term, trying to keep it at least half full. If it gets down to, to you know full zero, then that can start to stress the cells. So really nice stuff here from Bulls. Good. Thank you so much for coming out with me and showing me these cool trails. Awesome. Thanks for coming out, Kurt. Tons of fun. You guys, for the full written review, all the specs and stuff, the measurements, the width, the length, the height, the weight of everything. I've done my best to say it all on camera, but, you know, some stuff gets missed or flubbed a little bit. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Please chime in about your own experiences, especially with the new S Mag. It's a brand new motor, um, so hopefully it's reliable and it does a good job. Have fun out there. I love you. Ride safe. See you next time. Cheers.